Hi everyone! In this video, I will talk about how we can work with custom headers in .NET Web API applications and the different ways we can add and extract those custom headers. Custom headers allows us to add extra content to our HTTP requests and responses, which we can pass between the client and server. We can use custom headers for metadata, such as defining the current version of the API that is being used. We can also use them to define security policies our applications must adhere to. Anyway, there are a lot of use cases there for custom headers, so let's see how to work with them. First, I will start with the add actions, and later on, we will see how to extract the values from custom headers. So, as you can see, I have the controller already created, and let's create a simple get action here. It will return an iAction result, and let's name it custom header response. Within this endpoint, I will use the HTTP context property to get the response property to get again the headers property, which I can use to work with the response headers. Then, to add a new header, I use the append method with the name of my custom header and a value of custom header value. With the append method, I add a new header entry where each entry remains as a separate array entry. Also, I already prepared the custom header names class with my header names because I will reuse those names throughout this example. You can see the name of this header is xMyCustomHeader. Finally, I will return OK from this action. And for the initial implementation, this is all it takes. So let's start the app and test this endpoint by using Postman. And we get a 200 OK response. So let's just check the headers tab and we can see the custom header here. This works when we only want to add a custom header to individual responses. So next, let's take a look at some ways to add a custom header to multiple endpoints. If we want a clean and reusable method for adding the same custom header to multiple web API endpoints, or even at the controller level, we can define a custom attribute to achieve this. That said, in the attributes folder, I have the custom header attribute class created. First of all, this class must inherit from the result filter attribute abstract class, which is available in the Microsoft ASP.NET Core MEC filters namespace. Then I have to override the onResultExecuting method, which gives me access to the current HTTP context through this context parameter. So let's use it to access the HTTP context property and then use the same code we have in our controller to add a new header with the name and the value. Finally, I call the onResultExecuting method from the base class to ensure the response continues through the pipeline to the client. Now that I have the attribute defined, I will modify this existing endpoint. So, first, I will apply the custom header attribute here and then simply hide this line inside the action. At this point, it's obvious that I can reuse the attribute on many endpoints and also at the controller level. Ok, let's run the app again and use the same request to test this functionality. And again, we can see a 200 OK result and in the headers we can find a custom header added. Now, if you want to ensure all responses in our ASP.NET Core Web API application return a custom header, we can make use of the ASP.NET Core middleware. We can add a custom header to the ASP.NET Core middleware in the program class. So, let's use the app variable and call the use method. With this method, I'm adding a new middleware to the application's pipeline. This method has three overloads and I will use the third one, with the func delegate that accepts the context and the func task delegate as parameters. Within this anonymous method, I will use almost the same code I used in my previous example. Just this time, I can access the response property 
with the context parameter. I don't need to call the HTTP context first because the context parameter is of the HTTP context type. Finally, we need to ensure we call await next so that the next task in the pipeline executes. Now, before I test this as well, let me simply come back to the controller and hide this attribute. At this point, I can run the app and use the same request to test this. And again, you can see a custom header added here. Now, just a quick tip here. What if we have an application from a different URI that uses our API? In that case, we want to ensure that course policies don't block our custom header. So, let's take a look at how to enable it inside the program class. This is a simple example of enabling course in our app, but the main part is that we also add the with exposed headers method. And here is where we add our custom header. This line is what will allow our client application to use our custom header. I will not implement the course completely here because this video is not about that and I just wanted to give you a hint about how to expose the custom header with course. Of course, this is something we cover in detail in our Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book which you can find linked in the description below. Feel free to check out the book if you want to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. Great! With all of these out of the way, I can move on to extracting headers from the requests. So, for this, I already have the controller prepared and let's add a new action here. I need a get action that returns I action result and I will name it extract. Simple as that. In this action, I can access the headers dictionary through the HTTP request object. Then I can extract the header using the try get value method, where I will provide the name of the header I want to find and extract the value to the header value local variable of the string values type. Finally, I will simply return OK with the extracted value. So, this is enough to start with. And as you can see, we have to use the headers property again, just this time using the request property and not response. Now let's test this. And in Postman, I will use a new request with a custom header set. Let's send the request. And as you can see, we have a result with the value of our custom header. In addition to this, ASP.NET Core introduces the from header attributes that we can use to extract headers from the request. To show you that, I need to create a new class first inside the DTO folder. And let's name it header DTO. To make this simple, I will add two properties here. A public string first name and a public string last name. But to enable these properties to accept values from the request header, I need to decorate each one with the from header attribute. With it, I will bind every property of the header DTO object to the HTTP request headers. Now, I can go back to the controller and add another action here. The action is quite simple. I just use the from header attribute to specify that the parameter or property should be bound using the request headers. Again, let's run the app and use Postman to send a new GET request with the first name and last name custom headers. And as you can see in the response, we can find the custom headers, both first name and last name. Great, but if you want to ensure the extraction of any custom header in any endpoint in ISP.NET Core Web API, we can use action filters. To learn more about action filters in .NET Web API, I strongly recommend watching my video that covers that topic. You can find the link in the description below. So, I already have an action filter class created inside the attributes folder. And let's simply override the on action executing method first. Here, I will use the context parameter 
to access the HTTP context property and then the request and the headers properties and call the try get value method with the name of the header and a local variable of the string values type. Now I will use the context.htp context.items dictionary to help me store the extracted value and pass it to the controller. But before I do that, I will check if I already have the same dictionary entry. If I do, I will simply override the value of the entry with a new value. On the other hand, I will use the context.htp context.items.add method to add a new entry with the name and the value. Once I have the header key value pair in the dictionary, I can extract it in the action. So let's create a new get action with action filter as part of the route. I will also use the action filter attribute here and then create a public I action result action with the extract from filter name. Since in my action filter class, I already extracted the custom header value into the items dictionary, I can simply use it here with the help of HTTP context and call the try get value to get the value from the specified key, which is the name of my custom header and add that value to local variable header value. Finally, I will return OK with the header value. Now, I can run the app and use another request to test this implementation. Let's send it and you can see the response with the value of our custom header. As we did for the adding functionality, we can use the middleware to extract header values as well. So let's create a new class here, name it extract custom header middleware and inside create a new private read only field of the request delegate type and name it next. I will also use the constructor to initialize this field. Here I need to implement the async task method in wo casing that accepts an HTTP context parameter. This class will be registered inside the middleware, so it must have the request delegate field set with the constructor and also this invoke async method. Now I will simply copy the logic from the action filter and paste it here and remove all the HTTP context occurrences because the context parameter is of the HTTP context type. Finally, I need to await the next delegate with the context as an argument. With this done, let's move on to the program class. Here I will use the app variable and the useWhen method to conditionally create a branch in the request pipeline. That said, with the help of the context parameter, I can get the path of the request and check if it contains the middleware part inside the URI. Only if it does, I will use an action delegate that accepts an iAction builder as a parameter and with the help of that parameter, call the useMiddleware method to register my custom middleware in the request pipeline. Finally, I can navigate back to the controller. And let's simply add one more action here which is the same as the previous one, just with a different URI. This one contains the middleware part. So only when we hit this action, the middleware will execute the custom logic. Now don't get this wrong, the app will register our custom middleware as soon as it starts, but the logic will be executed only if we hit this endpoint and not the other ones. That said, let's run the app and use the final request here. And you can see the response containing the header's value. Excellent. You've seen different ways to add and extract headers in Web API, and you can use them in the situations that fit you the best. Now with this, I will finish the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.